Hey everybody, this is uh, part two of So You Got a Malinois, and um, what we're doing here is answering questions on high drive, working line dogs, how to better deal with them, how to better understand them, um, and it re refers to all kinds of working line dogs, not necessarily just Malinois, but um, we just call it So You Got a Malinois. So first uh, issue goes out to Murthy Peters, who says, last year an acquaintance of us bought a Dutch Shepherd. He was really rough with him when he was a pup, pinning him to the ground, hitting him when he lunged at other dogs, etc. The pup became very aggressive. When he was nine months old, the Shepherd pup was so aggressive they had to return it back to the breeder. Last week I heard he bought a Malinois pup. I could be wrong, but isn't a Malinois even more difficult to raise than a Shepherd, or are they both on the same level? First of all, we emailed about this afterwards. It's super disgusting that somebody would do this to a, a, a puppy. It's insane. And this is sometimes the problem when people get high drive working dogs. They don't know how to handle it, and they think that they have to completely dominate the dog and do this crap to the dog, which is really BS. Um, but hitting him when he's lunging, dog, hitting a dog, first of all, it makes no sense at all. Um, and the, when he was nine months, he returned the dog to the breeder. And if the breeder, I mean, the breeder obviously was very nice in taking the dog back because most of the time these dogs will end up in the shelter and I see him there. Um, but, and getting a mountain away, he's just gonna get bit. He's, I mean, I, I really sincerely hope that this guy gets bit bad enough where he doesn't get another dog. This is absolutely ridiculous. Thanks for letting me know. I wish I knew where he was. I'd report him too. But um, I mean, Malinois working line dogs take a strong hand. They need somebody who's very firm with them. But hitting a dog or a puppy and, and, and pinning him to the ground, I mean, this guy's been watching too much TV. This is really crap. So anyway, if you get a Malinois, you, you should know what you're in for. It's a lot of work. But uh, behaving like this with a dog is absolutely uncalled for. Next, Sylvan Bihari says, my dog is seven month old Dutch Shepherd, another Dutchie. Um, and he's very tall, but I try him on the bench, but he can get up on it when I put him up on it, but he trembles. He can come up on the stairs, but he's afraid of the height. So what can I do when he's afraid of height? So we start at lower, at lower levels, right? So we put a dog on a table to teach him a bark and hold. We teach him uh, positions on a table. We teach him confidence building exercise on a table. And generally being high up will build more confidence with the dog because it brings the dog higher to us. He's not looking up at us. He's looking at us at eye level. And we can, uh, we can work a lot of issues, get rid of a lot of fear in the dog, build super confidence issues. But if he's afraid of the actual height of the table, what you're gonna need to do is start him at lower, like a lower platform, then a little higher platform, than uh, maybe a, a, a regular table, like a dining room table, and then get him up to a higher table. But be careful he doesn't fall off. If he falls off, you got a big problem. So even in agility, um, when they teach the dog walk, they teach it on the ground. When we teach ramps, we teach him on the ground. When we teach him um, the, the A-frame, we teach it on the ground. We, we lower, lower, lower things to get the dog used to it, then we raise it. So go slow. It's, it's not gonna be that hard to fix, but if he falls off of it at a high level, he'll never get back on, then you got a, a nightmare to deal with. Number three. Um, so not everyone is suitable to be a mal owner, but how do you know if you're the right person? What abilities do good owners need to have? Well, first of all, you need to have a lot, that's to shell 19. Um, so the, first of all, you need to understand dogs. You need to have probably trained some dogs. You need to have handled some dogs. You need to have worked with some pretty tough dogs to understand. Um, and I'm not saying tough dogs like aggressive dogs. I'm saying tough dogs that, that, that think too fast. Malinois and working line dogs are always thinking. They're always trying to figure things out. Um, you need to be super patient, you need to be super dedicated, you need to be a, a real a dog person. Um, and a lot of times, I mean, I know somebody said under this, if you have to ask, you're not the right person for it. And I, I wouldn't say that. I, I'd say because you're asking, you might be a good person for it because you're willing to understand and uh, to, to question what it takes. So a really, a lot of patience, a lot of time to dedicate to training. You're gonna be spending hours and hours each day training this dog. So if you have a full-time job, forget it. You're, the Malinois is gonna be your full-time job. Okay, there's that. Um, Hunger loves food. My mal gets aggressive toward my friend's dog off leash, but only when we've stopped moving. When we're hiking, no problem. They sniff the same place, bump into each other, etc. But once we stop, after one or two minutes, my mal will snarl, pounce on my friend so I can pin him down. Uh, she also nipped his scruff. I haven't noticed any trigger, an overt trigger. She's two years old, a rescue and basic obedience training. I don't want to hurt my, I don't want her to hurt my friend's dog. That's a really good idea. But um, don't let her, when, she, when the dog is, when they're still, right? So the dog is fine when it's moving, when it's, when its mind is occupied. But when it's still, it might be trying to trigger movement into, in the other dog. 
And what I would basically do is teach the dog when you're still, you're still. So put the dog in a down. If you're doing basic obedience with the dog, I think that's awesome. Put the dog in a down, let her see other movement around and let her move around and control the dog. You're gonna to need to really control this dog with a leash, with a collar and with your voice and with your body. So you, you need to make sure the dog understands that the dog just can't go willy nilly pouncing on another dog. It's just not acceptable. Good Karma asks, um, my German Shepherd puppy is 11 months old. He started getting restless w when we're anywhere but home. We train and exercise daily. He settles great at home and will chew his bones or toys. But as soon as he gets to a different environment, family member's house, car, for example, no matter how much mental and physical exercise he's gotten, he still tries to play and will pace around and whine if he isn't playing. So the dog is super stimulated and the dog is not really comfortable in other environments. And if he's 11 months old, you, you should have done this early on. You should have done, done this when he was in the eight to 16 week window. The dog should be socialized in many different environments, in cars, in malls, in shopping centers, in restaurants, in any, anywhere you can get the dog to, the dog needs to understand that it's okay. So he's seeing other environments as things he needs to check out and keep an eye on and be vigilant, be guarding. So the best thing you can do is have some good solid obedience, get him into these other environments for very short durations of time and remove him from those situations before he gets too stimulated, before he starts to get all crazy. Because what's happening probably, he's getting crazy and then you're removing him and he starts to form a behavior that, well, there's something to be suspicious here or nervous about or whatever, so I'm gonna get excited. And when I get excited, I get removed. So it's this back and forth game. So you need to get him out of those situations when he's still really chill and for those of you who are thinking about getting a dog or who have a young puppy, get this dog to many, many, many different environments early, early on. I did it with Goofy, we're doing it with Dwayne. He can go anywhere and he's just cool with it because it's been set into his mind at a really early age before he had all these suspicious and crazy feelings. So you're gonna have to work, work on that. It's, it is not, it's not a typical puppy behavior because you're asking that. Um, so I would really, really get on that and make sure you have all that stuff on your puppy. It's really important that especially working line dogs that they get a good foundation of, of experience and, and, uh, and, and experience in different environments. So we feed the dogs in different environments, we take them to different environments, doing everything positive, everything with food, everything with treats and toys to get the dog to be very neutral to new situations and new environments, especially if it's gonna be a working line dog. Working line dogs have to go in cars and planes and go to different fields and different clubs and have to be good around all those different things. Critical, critical, critical that the dog's exposed to those things early on and that the dog understands those things as being safe early on so that later he's gonna be fine with it. So I'm gonna wrap that up for edition number two of So You Got a Malinois and uh, come back for edition number three soon. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up, a big thumbs up.